Now this week in our feature story, we continue our look at the guns of August, the basic infantry rifles of 1914. In our Rifleman Review this week, I'm heading to the range with a new Ruger Red Label. The guys at Ruger have made some changes to this classic American side-by-side. -side. Prior to this old gun, we look at the Chinese Type 56. That's the Chinese-made variant of the Selective Fire Kalashnikov. But for right now, let's step back a century to the guns of August. Two months that it took between the assassination of the Archduke and uh, the machines of diplomacy uh, in, uh, to, to, to grind on in the beginning of military mobilization, it took two months uh, to get that war machine uh, going. And you would think that had anybody, anybody at that time been able to look four years in the future and seen what had happened as a result of those few little rounds of 32 caliber ammo being fired out of that Browning, you, you might imagine that they would have worked harder to find some kind of more peaceful solution uh, than what uh, what transpired on the uh, on the Belgian frontier in August of 1914. If you've been paying attention to the Ruger catalogs for a couple of years, the red label dropped out, and that's because they were redesigning it. Dwight Potter, one of Ruger's engineers, took a whole new look at how to actually make the red label receiver. It's an investment casting, but now it's made from only one piece. The Ruger Red Label has an investment cast stainless steel receiver and the barrels are cold hammer forged at the Ruger plant. Now, there are some changes to the barrels, there's no rib between them and you have your options on which kind of top rib you'd like. But if you look very carefully at the Red Label's barrels, they'll appear to be wider apart in the center than they are at the end. And that's because the barrels themselves are thinned in the middle. They're nice and thick and heavy up here by the monoblock. They're also thick and heavy up here at the front, and the reason for that is that this gun comes with interchangeable choke tubes. One of the firearms that is probably the best known in human history is the AK-47. The prolific Kalashnikov design that so proliferated the second half of the 20th century. It's been experienced in combat around the world. At first, in the undying and epic struggle against communism during the Cold War. And then in the post-colonial world, the AK-47, the Kalashnikov design, became one of the most powerful symbols and then also one of the most powerful tools for that new era that we entered. The era when colonial powers, for example, departed Africa. It also became something that dominated the history of the Middle East and Southeast Asia and Central Asia.